Here is the very simple proof of the fact that for any linear transformation t, the set of all eigenvectors corresponding to the same eigenvalue lambda form a linear space. Now this is not saying much when that space is one dimensional. We have seen on all occasions that when a vector is an eigenvector of a linear transformation, any multiple of that vector, positive or negative, any multiple whatsoever, is also an eigenvector corresponding to the same eigenvalue lambda. So when we talk about that eigenspace, we usually choose a single vector to represent it. Now the situation is much more interesting when that subspace is two-dimensional. And maybe then we really need to see a proof that the set of all such vectors is indeed a subspace. And we have seen this on a number of occasions. Reflection with respect to a plane, projection onto a plane, and we saw an example like that in R3, and also the second derivative operator. So those are the examples that we've already come across, and rest assured that there are millions more. So here comes the proof. So to show that such vectors really do form a subspace, we have to show that they're closed under addition, closed under mul multiplication, or in aggregate that they're closed under linear combinations. So you can show it in two simple steps or in one combined step. So I will start the combined step here and let you finish it on your own, but I'll take you through the two simple steps completely. And of course the proof is completely straightforward. Well, what we have to do is to show that this is an eigenvector that also corresponds to the eigenvalue lambda. So to show that it's an eigenvector of the linear transformation T, all we can really do is apply the transformation T to the set, to the sum, and because this transformation is linear, it will be applied to V1 and V2 individually, and then the two will be added together. And of course, the result in the first case will be lambda V1, because V1 is an eigenvector of T. And in the second case, it'll be lambda, same lambda, V2, because it's also an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. And so lambda can be factored out. And then in parentheses, we have V1 plus V2. And the expression that we see, the identity that we see on the board now, tells us precisely the fact that V1 plus V2 is an eigenvector of T corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda because the effect of applying this linear transformation to V1 plus V2 is to multiply V1 plus V2 by lambda. So it passes the addition test. What about the multiplication test? Well, once again, by linearity, this can be written as alpha t of v1, and of course alpha t of v1 is lambda v1 for obvious reasons. So the whole vector can be written as lambda alpha v1. And this shows that alpha v1 is an eigenvector of the linear transformation t corresponding to the same eigenvalue lambda. So this completes the proof. And if you want to do these two steps in one step, you of course need to apply t to this arbitrary linear transformation, then use the linear property of t twice, and you must end up with lambda times the same thing. So I'll let you make sure of the fact that this actually happens on your own, and this completes this proof.